Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our first meeting of the North Dallas Plano Crew Focus Group. Uh, it's January 8th, 2020. I hope everybody had a happy new year. Uh, we're very, very glad you're with us for the first Friday, uh, first, well, first Friday that we could uh, get back together again today. Uh, so our agenda, just like always, we'll start out with some success stories. We have several landings to talk about. Uh, we will then go and let everybody introduce, introduce their, put in their 30 second introductions into the chat box so I can distribute those this afternoon. Uh, we'll then go to our committee reports and then we'll have our main event, which today is happens to be open forum. Uh, on, uh, for those people who are on uh, Zoom, we ask that in the participant box that uh, you please make sure that your full first and last name are there that way uh, I can capture that information uh, to add it to the roster. If you need to edit that, uh, hover over the, the little camera icon and you should be able to come up with rename and then you can rename yourself, uh, whatever it is you need to be. So please make sure your full first and last name is there. It's just good networking uh, abilities here. Uh, for those on Zoom, if you have any questions, well, we're gonna open it up just for everybody. So we'll, if you have questions, we'll ask that you raise your hand or when I see you unmute your mic, uh, that'll sort of that'll tell me that you've got a question later today. But if you have a question before we get into open forum, please just enter it in the chat box. For those people on Facebook, please just enter uh, your questions in the comment field, and I'll be sure to get those answered because I am monitoring that feed. Please note this event is currently recorded, being recorded, and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be available on the Career DFW Facebook page and on the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, and if you post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comments, name, and picture to appear. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Uh, since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The group's actually been around since the late 1990s. Several different people have run it over the years. Uh, but back in 2007, the guy who was running it uh, got a job and said, who wants to take over? I think I scratched my face. He said, okay, Jeff, you're it. So uh, I've been doing this since 2007. In 2008, I uh, created and launched Career DFW, a website to help the unemployed in the DFW area. In 2012, after uh, being invited to go to the White House, I went and launched CareerUSA.org to help people outside the DFW area. I've written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search that you may not know. Uh, the book's available on Amazon for 15 bucks a piece, but if you want to drive by my house, throw 10 bucks out your car window. I will attempt to throw a book in your car window if you drive real slow. Um, and since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. Well, we like to start the meeting off with success stories. Uh, I know we have some landings here. The first thing I want to talk about some landings I've heard about in 2020. Uh, this was after our last meeting on December 18th. Robin Miller uh, is, uh, landed at Blue Cora as a senior product manager. Melanie Thorpe landed as a long term has a long term consulting gig. Anne Goodman is a project manager for HR and finance at Eclara Caring. Uh, Catherine Vines uh, became a vice president of of, oh, of HR at Lexapol, not OR. Uh, Francisco Zana, uh, Vice President, Director of Engineering and Manufacturing. He couldn't announce the name of the company yet because the rest of the company didn't quite know yet. So uh, as far as I know from 2020, we've had 99 landings last year, which I think is pretty good for you know, a COVID year. People are still landing, people are still uh, finding positions. Uh, I will be emailing a lot of people who disappeared over the last 90 days uh, this uh, today, who haven't we haven't seen the last like November, December, uh, and I'm assuming some of those people have also landed. They just sort of dropped out and didn't tell us. So that number hopefully will go up a little bit. And then in 2021, I don't think is Leslie with us today. Let's see here. Do I see Leslie on the call? No, she's not. Okay, so Leslie Garrett has landed as a uh, she has he has a temp position with Continental Battery. She's a tax CPA. So she landed a temporary job right there. And then I know we have one more landing I just found out about this morning. So uh, Margaret, would you like to tell everybody your good news? Need to unmute your mic. Hi, 
everybody. Good morning. And thank you, uh, especially Jeff, for um, having this group. Um, I landed at State Farm in an administrative role, and I found it uh, on LinkedIn. However, I was able to network myself in to the company. Um, I have a sorority sister uh, from college that has worked for State Farm for 30 some odd years and rarely does she give a referral. So um, I felt very blessed to um, kind of get my foot in the door and really just, this was early December and I was able just to get an interview one week. I got an offer, initial offer the next week then they did the background check, um, security check over the holidays, which seemed like an eternity, but um, I just found out on Tuesday. So I'm just elated. And again, really the networking um, for me, it, it just really, really works. Um, and just a message to everybody, just to hang in there. Um, everybody within these networking groups are just willing to help and um, just don't give up. So happy new year to everybody. And thank you. Thank you for your time. Margaret, thank you very much. How, just uh, how long were you out of work for? Um, I actually, I was let go on December 15th and was asked to take the remainder of the year vacation. Um, I was with Texas Instruments and it was just not a good fit. I knew it was coming, um, but again, you know, it just, I kind of saw the writing on the wall and I thought, well, I'm just gonna get myself out there. And really these groups have been very, very healing. And for many, you know, whatever your uh, you know, job situation was in the past, you just have to move forward. And, you know, this is just a great networking group to help you over that uh, difficult journey for some. So thank you. All right, Margaret, congratulations. Thank you very much for sharing your story. So Margaret's number two for 2021. So uh, do we have any other landings that anybody else on the line who has landed would like to share their story? Got a couple to mention, Jeff. Okay, Mark, please. So this is from last year. Uh, Michael Sodalak landed. He actually landed for the second time. And um, he's an IT, uh, landed with a law firm, a, a large law firm. And then uh, Grace Ding has also landed a contract position at Verizon Wireless. So she landed that, I think, sometime early in December. I just found out about it at the end of the month. So thanks. All right. Well Great, so two more landings, so wonderful information. Uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff, how many people last year actually landed now that we have a more complete count? Well, I was up to 99, so with Mark, that makes a 101, and then we'll see whatever there's, you know, like I said, there's probably 20 or 30 people that disappeared during the month of November, December, so I'll be sending them out emails and asking them if, you know, for, the, for an update. So if uh, usually what happens, I usually hear back from two or three people who will say they landed. So uh, we're over a hundred. So uh, that's, that's great. Good. That's great news. That's two, over to almost two a week. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, and it's really a pretty amazing how it really sort of picked up there towards the end of the year because we had at one point the last in November and December we were, you know, we had three or four people landing every week. So. Uh, really, really good news. I think companies are picking up. I think I read something this morning uh, on one of the business reports saying that 82% um, of companies expect to be hiring people over the next, uh, in this calendar year. So, uh, you know, uh, stay positive. Things will open up. All right. What we want to do now is we want everybody, if you will, open up your uh, chat box if you haven't done that already. And we'd like you to enter in this, in, enter your information. We'd like you to put your name, a comma, phone number, comma, your email address, comma, positions you're looking for, comma, a couple target companies, and then hit the return key. That way all the information will be together. And then what I'll be able to do is I will compile all that information and I will send it out in an email this afternoon. That way you can get, uh, you know, maybe you can help somebody look down the list, find somebody who's got another job, another company that maybe you've worked at in the past, that would be really, really helpful. So if everybody will do that, that will be great. Let me see if I can uh, start a little bit of music here. 
So I hope everybody had an opportunity. You, you know, you can keep doing it if you're in the middle of uh, doing it, but please uh, get your information in there. That's how I'm going to be able to update the roster. I also will pull all that information off for anybody who's brand new, just joining us for the first time today. I will get that information, add that to our roster, and that's how we will invite you to our group. So you'll be able to uh, get future notifications of upcoming programming that we're doing. All right, it's time for a job, career fairs, training and workshops. Good morning, Eldon. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Jeff. Um, the uh, and happy new year to everybody. I sent a little message out earlier wishing everyone a uh, very happy, healthy, prosperous, safe, and above all, COVID free new year. And hopefully, 2021 will uh, lead everyone to new opportunities and be better than last year. Uh, the information I'm about to present comes from the calendar tab on the website careerdfw.org. And I focus on two elements of the calendar, the career and job fairs portion and the special workshops or events portion. I go through these things fairly quickly. If you hear something that piques your interest, I urge you to go to the calendar, click on that tab and find the event that you're interested in. There's usually more information provided in links that are contained within the calendar. All right, having said that, this week's career and job fairs. Unfortunately, there's nothing to report this week for career and job fairs due to the ongoing lockdowns and, and restrictions that I'm sure everyone is aware of. Uh, this week's special workshops or events. Uh, we have a private event that's uh, listed to find out about career DFW and careerusa.org and how to use them. It's a private event, but there is a link on the calendar uh, that you can go to and find out where the public events to discuss the website are. Uh, Jeff usually presents those. So I would urge you if you want to if you're new and want to learn more about careerdfw.org, the website, or careerusa.org, the website, uh, go to that particular private event, click on it, and you'll find a link where the public meetings will be held. Um, online LinkedIn Tuesdays at 1 p.m. online. Uh, this is a rotating seminar that's provided by Locke Alderson, Terry Sullivan, Ruth Lipsky, and Kurt Vondermatter. Uh, there's a Zoom link for that, and there's also a Facebook link to participate in that one. Interviewing Wednesdays at 1 p.m. online. Uh, there's a special guest series going on, and maybe Mark will talk about that uh, when he gets up to talk in a few seconds. Uh, there's a Zoom link and a Facebook link for that meeting. Uh, resumes Thursday online sessions with Carol Brickell, Certified Professional Career Coach. That'll be Thursday, January 14th from 1 to 2 p.m. And incidentally, the uh, meeting I mentioned just prior to this is January 13th and Wednesday from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Uh, there are Zoom and Facebook links for the Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday meetings. And finally, Friday, uh, this is the third Friday Internet of Things Special Interest Group Breakfast. It'll be held Friday, January 15th. It starts at 7.40 a.m. and runs till 9. They uh, always have an excellent speaker and it's a great place to network if you're interested in the concept of the Internet of Things. And that's it for this week. Elton, thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Uh, for those people, if you're trying to find another uh, networking group or something, uh, you can right here, I've added a banner to the very top of the website or in the middle of the website underneath the tip of the week that uh, shows webinar, teleseminars, radio, TV shows. If you click on that where you see the blue arrow on the right hand side, it'll open up a calendar here in a light purple and all the events with all the information that I have are on there. Uh, just in fact, I actually heard about a new group that's starting in the next week or two uh, in North Dallas. So as soon as I get more details, uh, I'll be adding them to the list as soon as they get me their, uh, their final information. Uh, if you know somebody who just lost their job, 787,000 people filed for unemployment yesterday or in this past week. Uh, if you know anybody who just lost their job, have them click here for help because there's a great uh, article here that I've put together. It's got several quickie little things that people can use. I really recommend, especially number two, uh, a couple of handouts, some Gail Bridgman 
about job search readiness checklist. You can just sort of check right off through it and see if you've got everything ready to go. Just don't start applying for jobs. Go through this checklist to make sure everything's ready to go. Uh, the practice interview team, Mark McDonald, good morning. No, oh, Mark, you're muted. <laughs> uh, Come on. I'll never, I, apparently, I will never learn. <laughs> it's a new year. I'm still doing the same old stuff I did in 2020. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the new year. The pit crew has gone to work. We went to work on uh, Monday, and uh, this week we'll have done four interviews. We did 161 interviews last year which uh, we did 157 the year before. So uh, what COVID? <laughs> so yeah, you guys are reaching out to us and 124 of those were video interviews. We got about uh, 30 done before COVID hit. Uh, so that's what the pit crew achieved last, uh, last year. So the practice interview team uh, helps you prepare for interviews and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's a panel interview. You're interviewed by people who have been hiring managers in the past as part of their professional responsibility, so they know what they're doing, and that's particularly important for the feedback you get. This year in 2021, we're going to be focusing more in the pit crew on how to build a connection with the interviewer, uh, specific things you can do over and above, you know, answering the questions well and using structured uh, responses like star stories and having a good opening and a good closing. We'll talk about all those things. Uh, the interviews take about 45 minutes. They're very personalized and customized. They're based on a job description that you provide and of course your resume as well. And so this group of hiring managers that's going to interview you gets that information in advance. They study up, they prepare, and they give you a very personalized and customized interview experience. And then afterwards, there's feedback and discussion about how to interview well in general and how to interview well specifically for the opportunity at hand. But that opportunity does not have to be something you're already engaged in. It, you know, most people, I would say, 90% of the people who reach out to the pit crew have an interview coming up, might be a second round or a third round interview, and they want extra help preparing for that. And we're glad to do that. Uh, but you don't, that doesn't have to be the case. You can just find a dream job, find a job description for your dream job. You know, it may be out of town. It may be something you'd never really take, but the description is very much what you're interested in. And so you can come and practice with the pit crew against that as a generic opportunity. And we're, we hope you do that as a matter of fact, because, you know, sometimes you get a call on Monday and they want to interview you on Tuesday and, you know, you can't put them off. And so you, you miss your chance to practice. So come and practice with the pit crew. And you do that just by sending that information that I mentioned, the job description and the resume to the email address there, dallaspitcrew at gmail.com. And it takes a couple of three days to get everything organized, to get your schedule and the three volunteers uh, all aligned. So uh, that's what you can expect. So if you send it in today, um, we'd be looking at doing it on probably Tuesday, maybe Wednesday as a backup. So that's the kind of lead time we need. And let's see, let me, what else can I say? Let me talk a little bit about the webinar. We, start, we did start the whole series, there's 13 um, sessions in our webinar series, the pit crew webinar series that Walt Glass and I present on Wednesday afternoons at one o'clock. And the first session last week, which is recorded and available on Jeff's YouTube channel, which I'll talk about at the end, uh, was about preparing for interviewing in general and how recruiting works. So that's uh, a very, you know, if you're just in your job search, I think both of those are very good topics because you're going to be contacted by recruiters and the way they behave is going to confuse you. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about how to prepare for a specific interview and then introduce some networking topics. So it's a combination of these first few sessions are a combination of getting prepared to interview and then also some of the aspects of searching for a job that are most important. So and then for 13 weeks, all the way through the end of March, the series will continue. And then finally, if you'd like to link in with me, just uh, send, uh, I, I posted up my LinkedIn link uh, in the chat window, just, but just include a brief message that said, we met on North Dallas Career 
focus group and that'll be good enough for me. I'll add you to my network, which is mostly people in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So I think it'll be a great help to you. And I won't talk about coaching Jeff. We'll leave that for the Wednesday session. Okay, very good. All right, uh, Walt, Interview Success Workshop. Good morning. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Um, I'll put some information into the chat window for you right now about the workshop. But let me ask you a few questions. Are you really prepared for an interview? Do you know what to sell? Do you know how to sell it? Do you know how to show them your energy and your passion and your excitement about the particular job in the company that you are pursuing? Uh, have, you, have you spent much time practicing the interview? You spent a lot of time on your resume. I'm sure you spent hours on that. Maybe continue to do so, but it's time to start practicing so that you can ace that interview. So I offer a little bit different service. I love the pit crew. I strongly suggest you participate in that. But I'm going to ask you this. What are the fundamentals of interviewing? What are the fundamentals of differentiating yourself from those other candidates? How can we sell those three things that companies are buying? And that's who you are, what you do, and how you can help them. So have you considered how you would even do your greeting to be different with your greeting? What's your opening going to be? How are you going to close the interview? I see very, very few interviews that are closed. This last year, uh, we did about 107 uh, workshop interviews. Over the last five years, we're over 1,000. So plenty of opportunity for you to practice in a very informal environment. This is a fun environment. It's a learning environment. We've got to learn those fundamentals first so that we can understand how to approach different categories of questions, approaches, strategies, perhaps some structures, options, things like that, because it depends on who you're talking to, what the question is, and where you are in the process as to how you would analyze how you might want to respond to that question. So I like to enjoy uh, working with people. We'll do it online through Zoom. You get a video of your interview. I've got a handout that goes along with another video that explains everything in the handout that you get. And it's all free. All you have to do is contact me at my Yahoo address. Look me up on LinkedIn. My about section gives you the details. Be glad to give you some availability dates, get you signed up and get you registered. So it's a fun time and I call it learning without worming. Well, there's always this poem thing that comes up. So today I got a new one. Spending all day applying on a laptop is not the best way to job shop. Register for the interview success workshop, practicing puts you on their list at the top. Oops. Oh, come on, my applause didn't work, sorry. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very, very much. All right, it's time for the uh, career tip of the week. Good morning, Roxanne, happy new year. Good morning, happy new year, everyone. The LinkedIn, the career tip of the week is LinkedIn etiquette for managers, employees, and recruiters. The first tip is don't send the message with just hi by Suzanne Lucas. LinkedIn has 660 million users and that number continues to creep up. With that many people, it's a fantastic place to network, share ideas and even make new friendships. There are lots of options for interacting on LinkedIn, but some things people do may limit the usefulness of this career focused social media site. She spoke to a group of LinkedIn super users. Many of them work as consultants, helping people maximize their effectiveness on LinkedIn. Below are some tips. Send a meaningful message. It should be short and explain something about why you connected. Hi, thanks for accepting my connecting request. I see we both work in plastics and I thought you would be a good person to follow. Personalize your message. Only send connection requests that make sense. If you can't think of anything to say, then it's probably not a connection you should be making. People who work in the same field or whom you find interesting or even industry leaders are fine. But if you can't articulate a reason for to connect, don't bother. Don't send automated connection requests. Bots can't network for you. There has to be a personal interaction. Otherwise it's like buying followers on Twitter. It may make you feel important, but it doesn't improve your business prospects. Every interaction needs to be personal. Watch your postings. A negative digital footprint can be irrevocable. Remember, 
people assume that if you talk trash about your last boss, you'll talk trash about your next one as well. Be honest, but positive. And in an age where which there are so many political conflicts, it may be best to keep your content business focused. Write your own content or share others' content by sharing their post, not copying and pasting. Don't make things up either. Keep it real and honest. It's okay to use LinkedIn for sales and recruitment, but remember that you need to build relationships first. Comment on people's posts, write their own posts, show how your product can be of use and build a relationship before pitching. People who use LinkedIn's recruitment product often search for job candidates by skills. Thus, if you haven't listed your currently marketable skills and secured high quality endorsements for them, your profile won't, wear well, won't fare well in a search request. If you're job hunting, be sure your skills are up to date. Hopefully these LinkedIn tips will help you have a more productive time on LinkedIn. That's the career tip of the week and good luck everyone. Roxanne, thank you very, very much. All right, uh, coming up here in just a few minutes, we're gonna have open forum. So hopefully y'all have some questions and we will answer those questions for you uh, or everybody here can answer questions for each other. I don't, I can, I'll just let you all talk among yourselves. Uh, coming up, upcoming here, uh, we've got uh, next Friday, we'll be talking about strength finders either. I mean, it's, it used to, it used to be called Strength Finders. It's now called Clifton Strengths. This is my old copy that I've got from several years ago. Uh, if you haven't taken the test, you may want to take it. I uh, highly recommend it. Uh, I think it's valuable, and uh, our speaker will talk about how to use it uh, in your job search. On uh, the 22nd of January, our speaker is going to talk about how to be a better brand, how to brand yourself. Uh, and then I have a speaker lined up for the 29th. Oops, sorry about that. I didn't have mine things up to date. Uh, on the 29th, uh, I do have a speaker lined up, but she hasn't told me what she wants to talk about yet or hasn't told me the title. So I'm waiting to get that from her. So we've got speakers lined up and I've got speakers lined up through the month of uh, February talking about background checks, about life changes, and uh, another speaker who hasn't quite given me a title yet, but uh, going. So we've got speakers lined up for the next two months. Uh, just a little note here. Uh, this is, you know, the North Dallas Career Focus Group and Career DFW are two separate organizations. Uh, the common thread is that I happen to lead both. Uh, Career DFW is a 501c3 nonprofit organization uh, run by myself and volunteers, 100% volunteers. Uh, the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group are a bunch of great people who used to get together on Friday mornings in person. Now we see each other via Zoom. Uh, hopefully, by the middle of the year, we'll be back meeting together in person. Uh, the only common thread is that I happen to lead both. If anybody here would like to uh, overthrow me here and take over the North Dallas Plano Focus Group, you're welcome to do so, but you're not going to get Career DFW out of my hands. Okay, it's time for the uh, main event, which is open forum. We're going to talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. So I will stop sharing my presentation here and uh, let's see here, view, gallery view. So now it's, you all ask your question. So uh, Jeff, I see you've got your hand up. So I'll let you ask the first question. Thank you, Jeff. Hey, I just wanted to let everybody know that I heard about a job search uh, virtual, uh, we call it virtual job fair. That's gonna be Monday all day. And it looked like they're going to have some interesting uh, topics throughout the day. And it's being hosted by uh, a group over in Georgia called uh, Roswell United Methodist Church. And I believe it's also co-sponsored by an organization called Crossroads Career, which is a job search networking group. I don't know much about either, but uh, uh, I have looked at them superficially online. I'm going to put that information in the chat box so that if anyone has interest, they can check it out. Great, Jeff. Thank you very, very much. There you go. All right. Okay, there it is. Um, question. Question somebody has about their job search. I'm full of answers, not full of questions. So if you don't come up with questions, this is going to be a very short meeting. Yes, Steve. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, my question is concerning the Texas Workforce Commission. 
is there anybody here who can speak intelligently about that? And two concerns I have is just better ways to navigate with them. And then two, um, is what's the policy on potential extensions of benefits? Going once, going twice, going three times, out. Okay, guys, thanks. <laughs> I, I don't know about extensions, but uh, you know, I just I use a I, I use their website for his filing and and stuff like that, and that's kind of the extent of it. It it seems to go through once you're in the system and set up. You know, the filing process and all that seems to go along okay. But yeah, I I, have I, any. I've dealt with that, Jeff, and I'm and I'm pretty. Um, Know, pretty far along there but ever just trying to contact someone live and then um you know i've had a few issues one like with an overpayment and then uh because because of a severance that i received and then two i'm just looking at um how much uh i was allotted and then you know my burn rate through that so and then concerning these um extenuating circumstances i did see like for example, this morning I did get my funds uh, 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 disbursement, and the federal money was in there for a week. So, okay. Uh, I mean, I also would recommend. I've heard this has worked in the past. Uh, contact your state representative. So, whatever con you know, state or Congress that you're in, if you con contact that person yeah. in the state of Texas or whatever state you're in. No, I'm I'm here in McKinney. It's Van Taylor. So. Okay. Um, Contact that person with the question saying you can't get hold of anybody. Can you please help me reach somebody in person? And I've heard that it's a very effective way to get hold of a live person at TWC. Okay, thank you. Uh, Stephen, this is Sam. Uh, I, I got my uh, extra 300 bucks started last week as well. Um, the, are you aware of the payment and claim status page? Yes, I am. Okay, so that's the closest thing I found to what you're looking for. And I've been looking for that for about three months. Okay. And, you know, I've gotten extensions on my plan that I didn't even think I was going to get. I literally ran out of my benefit period. And then all of a sudden it said, oh, look, here's another $6,000 back in your account. How did they get to that number? I have no idea, frankly. I know there's somebody that could probably explain that to us, but at this point, I'm getting, you know, my plan money, and somebody's approving that to come to me. So, uh, you know, if somebody does find that mathematical calculation out, I would love to see that at some point because it's been um, 10 months I've been out and I started looking for this and then I gave up a couple of months in and then I started looking for it again about three months ago and I just never got to that point. So it's a good question. You know, I really feel for you because I'm, I'm trying to figure that out too, but, um, but I'm thankful that it continues to be put into my account. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Well, that, that, that's good to know that they replenished it because I was just looking at my total number and you know what the what the biweekly uh, payment is, and you know my burn rate, and I'm just kind of like, uh, okay, you know. Um, so I just wanted to uh, reach out to the community here and see if anybody had some insight. So seems like there's more questions uh, than answers. Yeah, the, I used to have a contact at TWC, but that person retired, and once he retired, nobody else wanted to talk. <laughs> and maybe he only wanted to talk because he knew he was retiring. <laughs> no problem. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Steve. All right, uh, somebody else have a question. So I have a question about anybody in the group that has been doing videos. Um, you know, we get a lot of noise from other groups, the who you know, and so forth. And I'm on the verge of about to put out my first video. So I started writing my little transcripts of what I want to say and each topic. But I'm wondering, has anybody else got into, you know, the video world? And if you got any tips to help somebody get into it, um, you know, from a personal perspective versus what... I see out on LinkedIn and I've read from different groups that I've been to. So if you have tips, I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, wish me luck. Anybody else doing that? Good luck, Sam. 
I'm not right. doing it, but I know some people who are, and I know there are a lot of different video options. And one that I saw that one of the people was using, they were using Loom. Um, so that might be another video option for you besides uh, any of the others you might have heard of. And mm -hmm. then also what I liked on some of these videos is people are doing closed captioning as well. So you can read the words across the bottom. I have to look and see what my, my two friends use, um, but that might be helpful as well in case people um, want to read the video versus hear you speak or they don't catch every word you're saying. Yep. I agree. Is that pro, uh, video product? You said it's Loom. L O O M. Okay. Um, and I'll I'll see what the um, uh, what the uh, closed captioning um one is, and and I'll look at what my friend wrote down and right. can let okay, you know. Okay, great. Yeah, I've got a couple of programs, but I'm always looking for a new one to test out. Some of them, you know, some of them are cost money to actually use of them. And um, some of them I found are free. So I'm gonna start with the free ones first and see if they can actually give me good enough quality for what, um, you know, what I think I wanna have done. So thanks for the tip. If you're looking for, a, you know, just remember Zoom offers, you know, a great opportunity with, you know, if you get your camera set up right and your audio set up okay, you can always use Zoom to record. It does a very compressed file. So uh, I know that, you know, I, I save all the programs we've done in the last uh, year on my computer and the files are very compressed, but you can also edit them. So if you oh. need an editing program, there's a program called Shot. Uh, let me see here. What do I? Oh, uh, Shotcut. Shotcut. I highly yeah. recommend that. It's an open source program. Uh, I've used it. It's very easy. Well, once you learn how to use it, it's pretty easy. How to, it's pretty easy to use to edit a video with. You can drop in title slides. You can cut stuff out. Uh, I've used it uh, especially for the Frisco Career Transition Workshop to uh, re-edit and put those together when things were not going correct Great. very well. Excellent. So, yeah, that's the one I've got. I downloaded. That's the one I started playing with. Yeah. So, uh, so I, my concern was the ability to edit it, but it sounds like it's pretty powerful. Yeah. Oh, you can easily, I mean, once you get go, once you learn how to just cut things out and, and butt stuff together, that is extremely simple. Um, you know, you just have to make sure your computer's got the processing power to be yeah. able to handle it. It doesn't do any of it live. So, I mean, as you're cutting things out, it's just sort of remembering all this. And then when you're done, you hit save image, and then it could take 10 or 15 minutes for it to sort of process and, and butt everything together. Now, right. I will tell you that the image will become four to six times larger than the original image you get off of Zoom. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of really good YouTube videos on how to use the different features if you need to figure out how to use something on Shotcut. Excellent. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, that's, that's a good jump start right there. That was questions that I was going to have to figure out. Uh, so thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else doing any videos? So I guess my next question is, so where do you plan to, Sam, where do you plan to post your videos? Um, initially, um, the first one that I do is gonna be for LinkedIn. Uh, it's gonna be for an introduction of who I am, probably about two minutes long, um, trying to basically give some exposure to recruiters and hiring managers, people that go to my profile uh, to see that. And then um, I'm, I'm eventually going to create a YouTube channel and uh, post content out there. I don't exactly know what my theme will be, um, but I've got a pretty good idea of some uh, thoughts that I've always wanted to start creating uh, video content around. And then hopefully that leads to me to build in some kind of a website. You know, I think at this point, it's time on my hands. I need to learn how to be able to create, add some value to my skills and my abilities and, uh, you know, create a better selling platform for myself. So, uh, so that's my primary goal. Okay. Very good. All right. Anything else about videos before we move on? 
Uh, this is Esther. I have a um, just a comment or a question rather. Has anybody tried video, sending videos to recruiters uh, directly through LinkedIn, direct messaging? And, and if so, have you been successful in, in doing and in getting uh, responses from, from that? Anybody sending any live videos? No, I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. Not yet. I plan on it, but not yet. Okay. Yeah. You know, I think you have to be, I mean, I haven't tried sending anything, a video through LinkedIn, but, uh, you know, I know that uh, some people, every once in a while, I'll get an email from somebody who's got a, you know, a bomb bomb attachment or a video attachment. And I tend not to open those unless I really know who they are, because quite frankly, I'd rather read the email then sit and listen to somebody talking. So, you know, but I don't know. I think you can, you can read a lot faster than you can watch a video. So recruiters, I think, don't have a lot of extra time on their hands. Now, sending a video may be an effective way to send a thank you note, a video thank you note, because you've already met the person, you want to thank them for what we've done, as long as it's you know, 60 seconds, 90 seconds at the most, you're not taking somebody's time up, that may be an effective uh, use of, you know, sending the video after the fact. Uh, and once again, the fact that you've got Zoom, everybody's got a Zoom account that you can download the video right to your uh, computer makes it pretty easy, um, you know, as long as you have things set up right. So Esther, are you trying to just connect with recruiters more and that's what you want to do and, and you're thinking of video as a different way or what's your objective? It, well, yeah, in terms of trying to network my way into uh, recruiters, uh, either through using informational interviews uh, as a way, but using video uh, because I've tried the the email approach and it's a hit or miss um, with that one. and. I, I do understand that they're overwhelmed with a lot of work and, and reviewing a lot of resumes. So I was just wanting to gauge how effective was video versus the email. So basically that's what I was trying to gauge a little bit better. So you mean about targeting recruiters at companies that you're interested in? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, I sense. would think that, um, you know, there are a lot of firewalls at companies. <laughs> so you know, they say external email, watch out, don't click any links. Um, yeah. I don't know how easy that would be. Um, and it might get trapped in the firewall anyway, uh, yeah. versus, uh, and be considered spam versus you sending email. But um, yeah, uh, you can that's try it. That's a good it. point. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about the firewall. So yeah, so that's a very Esther, good point. I'll, I'll take it one step farther. So you say you send, you've send you been sending emails to recruiters, you're not getting a lot of feedback. Mm -hmm. Of all the emails that you've sent to recruiters, how many times have you picked up the phone and tried to call them? I, I don't have their contact information. I'm uh, targeting recruiters through LinkedIn. So I check their contact information. They only have their LinkedIn profile. So I don't have their their phone numbers. Otherwise, I would call them up. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you know the name of the company, call the company switchboard okay. and say, I'm trying to reach so-and-so because, okay. you know, uh, um, Carol Burkell on Thursday, she talks about in her resume class, she said when she was a recruiter, if somebody would call her up and say, I know you're looking for this. I can meet those, qual I have those qualifications. How can I help you, you know, please let's, you know, when you take a look at, can I send you my resume or whatever that she said, every time somebody would call her up, she would purposely go find their resume and take a look at it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and talk with them. Because if you took the time to find them, to call them up and say, I can meet your requirements or I meet your requirements, you've saved them a step of going through a big pile or not, not a big pile, but flipping through a bunch of resumes mm -hmm. online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Thank you. You know, I know we all have phone reluctance. Nobody likes to pick up the phone. It's so easy just to shoot off the text or send that email. I mean, I'm the same way. I'd much rather just send an email than pick up the phone and talk to somebody. But uh, it, this is what makes you stand out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I might also suggest that if you're making a connection request to an individual, 
that you could send a short personalized video on your connection request instead and of I, just and typing I do. I, I do. I do. I don't just blindly do that as far as connecting blindly. I do uh, personalize and I ask for, I even give them the time. I said, can you give me 15 minutes of your time to talk about your career journey? Uh, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, that's what I, I <clears throat> yep. target. I uh, To give them a, a sense of what I'm going to talk about and also the time uh, length that it will be the conversation. Yeah, for those of you uh, that don't, don't know about the uh, networking information and some of the stuff that's out on Career USA on the resources on um, scripts for that sort of thing that you can use to get started to help you with the what kind of things you would say in a video as well. So that's good. Are you getting responses from those connection requests? Uh, some of them, it's a hit or miss right now. Uh, like I said, I think it's because they're overwhelmed with their with looking at so many uh, resumes. But I, I keep plowing along. I don't give up. I'm very perseverant. Be interesting if you keep any statistics on uh, request without videos versus request with videos and your mm -hmm. response rate. Mm -hmm. See if that's yeah. really making a difference. Yep. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Somebody, uh, do we have a, another question somebody would like to ask? I was wondering if anybody's had problems with uh, like predatory practices, uh, online, uh, I guess, type uh, predator recruiters that are uh, out there maybe trying to take advantage of of the job seekers. We ha I haven't seen any uh, particular topic in any of the support groups about that. And I was just wondering if, if anybody's had a problem with that, what we should be on the lookout for, um, anything of that nature. Well, I don't know about the term predatory. I'm sorry, this is Tom Atkins. Um, I've dealt with recruiters a few times and not yet had a positive experience with them. Um, they seem to be very aggressive and send me this, send me that and all that. And then suddenly you never, ever hear from them again. Um, others may have a, had a different experience. Uh, you know, I'll still use them if the opportunity comes up because you never know. Um, but like I say, they, my, my two, two tries, um, as soon as they think I'm assuming they think that I'm no longer the best candidate. You don't hear anything from them ever again. So just be ready for them to be aggressive and and very upbeat and telling you you're wonderful. And then you never hear from them again. I think that might be the nature of their industry. I don't know. That's just what happened to me. One experience I've had, this is this is Paul Klotz, um, is I've had several people call me saying that they saw my resume online and that I was a good fit for a job that they're recruiting for. And what they're really looking to do is sell me uh, resume writing services. So you're a really good fit for this job, but you need to rewrite your resume like this. And for 150 bucks, we'll help you do it. That's interesting. Yeah, very interesting. I've had that twice. For those people who didn't attend yesterday or uh, Wednesday's uh, first session on interviewing, Mark and Walt talk about recruiters and they talk about recruiters a lot. The whole key and, you know, we're all sort of hung up on recruiters. Remember, recruiters only fill 10 to 15 percent of jobs that are out there. 75 or 80 percent of jobs are found through networking so you need to you know expand your network you need to do information interviewing that's how you're going to find your next job i mean yes it is possible we a recruiter could fill a slot and get a job for you but the chance of that doing it's one out of five versus you know uh interviewing or uh, informational interviewing could be three or four out of five so you can go back and watch if you haven't if you didn't get to see it on Wednesday, go back and watch that presentation. It's on the Career USA YouTube channel under interviewing uh, session number one. 
Uh, it's really good. It breaks down the details about recruiter, but don't get hung up on recruiters because you know they're not there to help you. They're there to make a dollar. They're there to put a dollar in their pocket. And uh, as soon as they find somebody a little bit better, off they go. They need the hiring manager. <laughs> right. What I found is is that um, there's a lot of people that are offering to write resumes right now a glut in my opinion. And I know people that have been writing resumes for a long time. My sister-in-law writes resumes for a profession. But what you have to be aware of, I think, at least what I do, is I look at people's profiles and I figure out, is this somebody that's just figuring out, maybe I can help people write resumes? Or is this somebody that can say, I know how to help you write a resume, but I can also give you some career coaching tips? Um, there's a difference in the, in those kind of people. And, um, I've been using that just to really help gauge whether I'm going to use some services. I worked with Carol and she helped me improve my resume on a couple of revs. Um, and I've gotten good feedback after her changes. Um, I also found that, um, I initially had my resume written, uh, by my sister-in-law and she did a great job of my, what I call my first version, my first transformation after eight and a half years of not working, I had to take this old style resume and bring it up. And so she did that for me and gave me like three different formats and so forth and said, you know, which one do you think is best? Because these are three different types of formats. Since then, I've had my resume officially reviewed and modified two more times um, as, as I've learned and as I've gotten other people's opinions, I figured out that there are some resume writers that can do this as your initial step to get you into a new resume format. And that's about as far as they can take you. They're really good at that. And there's a lot of business for people that are trying to just get that first resume out there. But once you start trying to create multiple resumes and tailoring them and creating a library of the assets that you're trying to put together, like cover letters and skill sheets and so forth, then a lot of that you have to seek out people that are specific in those areas. And that's what I've done is, you know, I talked to Carol about some very specific parts of my resume and she was very helpful because she said these in these areas, this is what I would improve. So I've also sought out people that help with um, branding and talk to them about that. So I guess my long story short is there's different types of resume writers. There's different types of resumes that you will mature through and live through as you're modifying them. And there's also people that are more than that, where they can help you work on career choices, pivoting in a career, branding, etc. It's very interesting. I, I review, I see a lot of resumes for different people. And the one thing that I noticed with more than half the resumes is that your bullet points don't have results. They tell me what you did, what your job description was, but they don't sell me on my, why I should hire you. Every bullet point you have on your resume needs to have a selling point. And when you customize your resume every time for a job description, if you already have all these bullet points as selling items and things result oriented bullet points, then it should be real easy to then send a customized resume to a job description because you've eliminated everything that they're not talking about in the resume, that they're not talking about in the job description. If they don't talk about the job description, you don't need to do it. You don't need to tell them about it. Yes, you've probably done a lot of great things in your career, but when you're filling out a, when you're, you know, sending in that resume against a job description, just tell them what they need. Tell them they want, you make it easy for them to go, I'm looking for this. Yep, this person's done this. Here's a good one. And, you know, later when you have stories to tell, if you're in a personal interview, then you can tell some of those other stories and other results that you've done, but stick to what they want to know. You know, I've always wanted to for a big fundraiser for Career DFW, 
is to get all the top resume writers in the city, put them together in an MMA match. And uh, it's a knockdown drag out to see who can come out with the best resume. Now, Dirk Spencer will win because he's uh, ex-Marine or whatever. I mean, he's combat ready, but uh, you know, he'll knock out the rest of them. But what it, what it boils down to is what Dirk wants to see on a resume and what I want to see on a resume, and what Walt or Mark or somebody else may want to see is up to what we think, what we are looking for. So, you know, I mean, I'm looking for, you know, I want to see results on a resume. You know, don't show me a job description. Don't tell me what you did. I want to know what kind of results you had doing the things that you were required to do. Sell yourself into the job. I mm -hmm. talk about on the Thursday resume class we had yesterday, you know, you need to have a master resume. Have that 10, 15 page resume with 15 bullet points each underneath every job. You put all the details, you know, all the detail, all the details that you would ever, ever need. So it's in one document. And then when you see a job, you save that and you cut it down to just tell them what the recruiter is looking for. Make it easy for them. Yeah. Right can, I, can I make a comment about, so I think the uh, original question was about predatory recruiting. And so let's address that. And that's a good topic. We should add that to our pit crew presentation because you will be contacted by recruiters in quotes who really are trying to get money out of you. And, uh, you know, a few years back, it was a $5,000 to help place you and rewrite your resume. And let's come in and have a meeting and bring your spouse, you know, because they wanted to play upon your spouse's fear that you might be unemployed for a long time. But the fact is recruiters are paid by their clients, their clients, are the hiring companies and they shouldn't ask you for money if they really are recruiters. There's also some salary survey work done that way. They'll just call and ask what your salary requirements are for a type of job and that's all the information they're looking for. Well, yeah, so we talk about this in the webinar. I mean, there are a group of recruiters who are in the fast and furious uh, I call them rookies or, you know, heard them called rookies. So that because new recruiters are often given these jobs, they're not difficult to fill. The, the first qualified candidate's good enough. It might be a three or six month contract. So they take a look at your resume. They figure out that you're probably in the ballpark. Like I said, the first acceptable candidate's good enough. And so now their only primary question is, will you accept the pay? that they're, they're able to offer. And then if so, then, you know, they'll move you forward. And if not, they may ask you a few more questions to verify that what you put on your resume, you actually did, but um, they're not spending a lot of time with you. And that's why they behave that way. All right. Well, it sounds like uh, not a lot of people have had a severely negative experience somebody trying to steal their identity or something like that so i guess uh there's not that many people in this space trolling uh, jobless people uh taking advantage of them so that's a good thing i guess well i think we're a little bit above average because we attend sessions like this to find out this knowledge and so we, when somebody calls up your if the hairs in the back of your neck stand up you in the phone call real quick i had a recruiter from detroit reach out to me we played time zone tag for the last week finally he called he got hold of me yesterday and it was every time we set up an appointment he'd be on eastern time i was on central time and so he and i was putting cst in my emails but he wasn't he didn't pick up on that so finally he got hold of me. He said, yeah, I just want to help you with your recruiting needs. And I go, well, obviously you didn't read my profile to know what I do. Oh, well, no, not really. I said, okay, thanks. Goodbye. You know, that was the end of the conversation because, you know, they didn't, he didn't really know that I don't hire anybody. I mean, crew FW, we're a volunteer organization. It's, you know, he, he didn't get any of that. So, yeah. oh, well, you never know. Okay, what else can we answer? Good questions. Oh, come on. 
Hey, uh, this is Miguel Castillo. Um, so this is um, not really, I mean, it's maybe just your opinion. Um, we're just in the first 10 days of the year following a very odd year, unusual year. Um, and so middle of the pandemic, but um, you've talked all this time about like in the holidays in December, how the activity continues and we have seen that. So when you see like the profiles of people that land jobs, you know, is, is January a slow month? I've heard some people say that, you know, the first, it takes two to three weeks at least, if not longer for companies to restart again the process. Uh, I'm, I'm an eternal optimist. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in, in the first few days of this year, I've seen probably more opportunities than, um, you know, in, in um, you know, some periods in the last couple of months. Um, again, on understanding that is your opinion, it's a really odd year. Um, do you have any comment on, you know, what, what um, have you seen and what do you think uh, things are, you know, I, I think there's a pent up demand. I guess that's, that's the other thing why I think that there might be some opportunities, you know, many companies have been um, slowing, you know, they have frozen positions, they have uh, slowed down investment uh, and, uh, and, and there is the need, um, the economy is still doing okay. Um, you know, not in certain industries, but overall the structural, um, you know. So any comments on that from all of you? Mark, you want to go first? I mean, yeah, you talk so, about numbers from the pick room. Yeah. 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 So yeah, there are a couple of slow months. They aren't the months you would expect. There may be industry specific variation, you know, but the pit crew sees all different kinds of uh, industries and levels and um, careers. So the slowest month of the year is August and the second slowest is July. So it's holidays and ch children activities, vacations and things that, like that, that put a damper on uh, interview activity. And uh, it's not any other month. They're all, there's really no seasonality except for that late summer seasonality. You know, I would say that, you know, if companies were holding out during the 2020, you know, I think companies feel to really had the, the companies that are really thinking about what they're doing, really thought about what they did. They shed a lot of workers and now they're realizing, all right, here's what we need to bring back. I mean, I've heard of a couple instances of people from American Airlines where, you know, American Airlines laid off all these people, all this executive staff, and now they're actually bringing back some of the staff because I realized we really need that person, but it took them you know, a few months to sort of figure out what was going on and to see what was happening. I think that now that the elections are over, I think now that we're into a new year, uh, things are going to sort of calm down a little bit, hopefully. I mean, we won't be getting the rhetoric like we've seen this past week and that things will be more calm. I think companies, you know, a lot of companies had to wait until the first of the year to start because of new budgets before, to, you know, rehire somebody. I know my daughter just got hired she happened to start December 14th, uh, or she could have started this past Monday, but she picked the 14th, so she'd have the week off between Christmas and New Year's. So as a new employee, that was really handy. Uh, and I've asked her, so what have you been doing this week? Well, I talked to her last night. She said, I'm, we're still in the ramping up stage. They really haven't, you know, they're hoping by next week to really have assignments to give all of us. They hired, I guess she was one of 10 people to be hired as of December 14th. So. I think that yes, companies will be hiring now. Like you said, there I think there's more uh, jobs being posted out there. Uh, but once again, make it easy for the recruiter. Make it easy for the posting. Make it you know modify your you know your application, your cover letter, whatever it is, to tell them this is what I can. This is what you're looking for. And this is what I can do. Interesting that you say that because um, I, I was one of those at American Airlines. Um, oh. <laughs> um, they, they reduced 6,000 positions just in management. That's 30%. Uh, in my, I'm, I'm in finance. In, in my, at my level, in my um, area, you know, essentially they reduced 60%. So, um, you know, it, is, it was really, you know, a uh, reduction that you, you, you prevent any growth or, or even maintaining the operation. So. Right, right. I mean, you know, anybody in the travel, hospitality, I mean, things are going to be really bad. I mean, you know, I also think the other good thing is that, you know, now that the vaccine's finally rolling out, I think that gives companies hope that we can maybe get back to normal. I think that come August, September, October, there's going to be so many people 
heading out on vacation and going places because they haven't been able to do it for a year and a half. I know I plan to, as soon as I'm able to get out, I'm ready to go places because, you know, I, I know all the nooks and crannies in my house. I'm ready to get out and see some new things. And I think a lot of people are going to, you know, have that pent up. They'll be ready to go. So um, I, I think those industries will come back, but, you know, the business traveler, I think will be, you know, you won't see business travelers as much. I think the whole, that travel industry will have to change because businesses can just do this. They can have Zoom calls. They've seen how effective it is. So I think that there'll be a lot less uh, business person, the person uh, kinds of meetings. Yes, there'll be some, but not to the extent that there was. Just a side note, uh, companies are always hiring. They may not be posting, but if you can get into a company that you, where you want to work, talk to somebody, show them how you can help them, what they do, and you're the kind of person they need, they will hire you. They'll make a position. So you, you kind of go from the perspective of, I can't let what's, what, whether it's a slow month or whatever, you know, I can't let that affect me. And I'm sure you're not, you're not doing that, you know, but at the same time, approach it with the, here's the place I want to work, here's the kind of job I do, so I can help them, what I can do. They will, it's hard to find a good person from their perspective. And when one's sitting right in front of them, if they don't even have it, they'll make one. So work it that way, look at it that way. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to add something really quickly. Um, so I was following up with somebody uh, at a company that I'm, I applied for a job at and somebody is already there at that company. And I said, yeah, I thought I was going to hear back from them. They're like, oh, we're doing some, they're doing some rework. They're super busy. So there's a lot of reorgs and stuff going on at the beginning of the year as well. So um, I'm not going to be following up again with them until next week sometime uh just because i had applied like in mid-december holidays hit and then I'm like hmm, i thought i would have heard back by now and they're like yeah they're going through some reorg people moving into different roles other things happening so um and then i had heard also that the, the jobs number was really disappointing um for for this past month um with the rising cases and covid etc so um we'll see how it goes but working on getting some stuff uh, for next week. I have a question for you that have been in the hiring process before. So you're working and one of your things you gotta do is, is hire some people. Where did it fall on your to-do list? Was it in the top third, the middle third, the bottom third? Where was it in your priorities? <clears throat> I will bet you that it was in the bottom third. I'll bet you that all the tyranny of the urgent had to be done first before you could get those interviews and then if you want to schedule people together, you couldn't get three people together to do a team interview. That process took a long time. And so you get down to the hiring process and it's pretty unbearable, very difficult for the company. So there's gonna be delays in all of that, which means we just have to work harder to figure out how to get around these barriers so that we can get in and get ourselves noticed and get to talk to somebody, that sort of thing. So I, I claim that the hiring process is the most dysfunctional process in business today. And then you got all this change going on, you know. Why do you slow down in July and August? Because you can't get people together to hire. It's not on the. It's, it's the bottom of the to do list. That's you know that's why it is. So we can expect people not to respond. We don't. We won't hear from them for a long time. Uh, that that's primarily the reason we don't hear from. Them. It's not that they're that they're not hiring. So we just get busy and say, hey, we can't let that stop us. We're going to move full steam ahead. Yeah, that's absolutely true. You know, um, the uh, the hiring, and, and many times it's actually when you need it the most, you know, when you have uh, many openings, you cannot afford to spend the time to hire those, you know, positions because you're running just to try to, um, you know, complete the, uh, the minimum that you need to, uh, to do to get to a certain milestone or a goal. I'm too deadline. busy doing the job of the person I would hire. Right. <laughs> So true. All right, something else we can answer for somebody. Come on, somebody has to have something that's been- I have a question. Up. Okay. Thank has you, anybody Patty. gone through the Amazon Web Services loop yet? 
I um, interviewed with them, but not AWS, just more the uh, the rest of the business, you know, um, okay. you know, kind of the warehousing side. And, you know, and then there was a position also in Seattle, but not a AWS. I, I do know of a couple of people. So if you're interested, I can find out details for you. Yeah, maybe we can um, connect offline, Miguel. Yeah. And yep. that would be great. And we can talk about pizzas. Yeah. Right. And Patty, uh, be sure to bring that up on Monday because I know there's some people on the Monday call uh, that we're part of that have gone through AWS. Yeah, I'm also going to talk with somebody else today who has gone through the loop or know some people. So um, anyway, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, the loop is what they call basically seven to nine interviews back to back. And they ask you all about the questions on their leadership principles. Um, so it's it's pretty um, intense from what I hear. So um, yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to talk to some people that have been through it. Hey Patty, this is yeah, this is John Wesley. I'm, that's good insight. I uh, it's it's interesting. I I've scheduled the first part of the loop. I I expect is uh, to schedule an interview. I need, I just did that yesterday for next week. So. And I it's kind of, it's really weird because their process, even when you, 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 uh, you go through and read through the process, it's a little different. So that's good insight. I'll, I'll be looking to, to be able to. Yeah, I was told if you Google Amazon um, leadership principles, you should start with that. I printed them out actually. Um, and, um, and then go from there because they are going to give you different behavioral situational questions regarding each of those leadership um, principles uh, and, and different people are going to ask different ones. Um, so that's what I was told. So I was told by a hiring manager, first there's a phone screen, then there's the loop. And then, and then after that, it's, it's, um, you know, I guess they make a decision if you're going to be hired or whatever. So um, I'm, so I'm getting prepared for that. So every day is day one. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we've had a few people in the pit crew go through the process at Amazon and it's pretty much the same, whether it's web services or logistics or operations. And uh, the loop I think is the third stage. You usually have an HR screen, then you talk to the hiring manager. Then sometimes- I've already passed the, the one or two. I've already yeah. spoke to the hiring manager who actually then sent me the link to apply and said, I'm gonna approve it. <laughs> You're gonna be in the loop. Right. So. And then sometimes I've had some candidates have been asked to do a written document. And yes, I also have to do a written sample. Okay. And then the loop comes and, uh, and this varies as well, but most of the people who've gone through that I've been involved with got a list of, you know, were given which ones they were gonna focus on for that particular job. Because not every, uh, not all of the leadership principles apply to all jobs. Right. So there's they're one about hiring people. There's and, and so if you know if it's not a if it's an individual contributor position that doesn't apply. Right. But they like to they will each one of them gets an hour they will take the whole hour, so there's no yeah. they don't take any shortcuts. And the one trick I've heard is that they'll you know tell me about a time where you know you did something that displays this principle, and then you'll answer and they'll say okay well tell me about another time. And, you know, then tell me about another time. So they really go very deep. And if you don't, you know, this is how they judge your breadth of experience, because not only are they looking for depth, they're looking for breadth. And so there you go. That's. I hear it's um, very intense. That, that would be seven or eight hours of, of interviews in one day via Zoom um, or their Amazon Chime rather. So um, yeah, sounds like it sounds like a load of fun, a, a barrel of monkeys. Um, John, you and I are going to be in for it. So <laughs> thanks. Yeah, they might even also ask, uh, why did you choose that story? I mean, what what is it about that story? Why did you choose that one as, yeah. as a, another thing? And so, yeah, get your energy bars ready. Get your drinks handy. <clears throat> You want to be just as excited and energized at the last one as at the first yeah. one. Get your get your library of uh, star stories ready to go. There was a person who was talking to the CEO as the last interview of about a six seven hour day of interviews, and when that person walked into the room, 
and read it, he said, you're higher. And she, she said, why? I said, anybody that's been through all the stuff that you've been through today and walked in looking like this, but the energy you have, that's the kind of person I want. And that was the end of the interview. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, well, I, that would be awesome because I think that, you know, what anybody goes through at Amazon with all those interviews, it's just like, are you kidding me? Like a full on hour with each person and going through seven or eight people. That's just, that's a whole day, a whole day of interviewing. It's just crazy. They it sounds like it. so they there's a reason that. for that. There's Do a reason for that, that, Patty? That. Sorry? Do they record that? I, I don't know. Hmm. Be interesting to know if they're recording that and then, you know, using that as a way to play back to other, you know, hiring people besides, you know, once you leave the loop, if they've recorded all the sessions, they could run that through a lot of different people's perspective after that loop session. Yeah, could be. Um... I'm not sure. I was just kind of told what the process was. Um, I applied for the job today after the hiring manager sent me the link. So we've already actually done the, the phone screen, if you will. Um, and he said, basically, if I have to do another phone call with him, it would be basically in prepping for the loop. <laughs> so wish me yeah. luck. <laughs> yeah, good luck. That sounds like a good opportunity. Definitely a good challenge to get into it. That's for sure. Yeah. What type of job is it, Patty? Um, it's the um, it's an enterprise sales director um, and consumer packaged goods, and that's my area of expertise is consumer packaged goods. Blow them away! You got it. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. What else can we uh, talk about? What else is going on? There's a couple of topics in the chat, Jeff, if you haven't seen those. Oh, okay. Uh, tell me what they are. I haven't been, I haven't really been looking here. Let's see here. Um, Does anybody have one any from Suzanne about change career directions? Does anybody have any suggestions on where to start to change career directions? I need to find something not in food services burnt out after 13 years. Where do you recommend, doesn't St. Andrew on the, um, Bill have Brewer? A, yeah, Bill Brewer, doesn't he have a, a career assessment test or a module yes. that you can take that maybe would help mm -hmm. yes. figure out where you may, what else you may want to do? Yes, they do. Yeah. So uh, St. Andrew, Bill Brewer, you can check him out uh, and maybe take their career assessment. Um, you know, strength finders will tell you, here's what I'm good at, you know, and, you know, what, one of the things that I found, you know, I hope I'm not blowing Brandy's uh, talk next week is that, you know, strength finders breaks down your talk into 32 different strengths. And the goal here is your top five strengths are what you need to focus on. Don't try to focus on your bottom five strengths because you can work on those all you want and those maybe will move up into the 20s somewhere. But if you focus on your top five or top 10 strengths and excel at those top five or 10 strengths, you can really excel because you're already good at it. Now you're becoming better or becoming an expert in it. So I think Strength Finders, that's why I love Strength Finders. I think it's a great uh, tool if you haven't, uh, if you haven't taken it. It can, help, it can help you talk about what you're good at. And uh, in some cases, I mean, you know, what you're good at, you know, everybody who has this top strength, they're not all in accounting, they're not all project managers. Your top strength can be good in many, many, in all the fields. It's just, this is the strength that you're best at and are your top strengths that you're best at. So um, what else can people recommend for if you think about changing a career? I can have a couple of tips. Uh, Jack Bick says, answer these three questions. What are you good at, which you just talked about, Jeff? What do you like to do? And how does this affect your family? Now, there's some paths you can take to say, okay, what industries do I want to work in? What's going on? What's happening? Bureau of Labor Statistics has some good tables on industries, what's happening, what's going on, those types of things. And so what, what industry would you pick? 
if you want to just change a job, that's one thing. If you want to change an industry, that's another thing. And if you want to change both, that's another thing. Uh, bottom line, it's a little harder and more work to do to accomplish that. I definitely agree with Jeff. You start with your strengths because you want to sell more of your strengths than your activity that would relate to another industry. But activities, leadership is leadership, right? Finance is finance. You know, it's, it's kind of industry irrelevant. So as you sell, this is what I'm going to sell. So your resume has to look that way. But how do you pick it? There's a path A that says, this is my dream job. This is what I'm really excited about. And there's path B. Uh, this, if I can't get that, then I would, I would go to path B that would help me get the path A. So some research on the industries, research on the types of jobs you'd be interested in doing that match your strengths is your starting point to say, okay, let me vet these. Let me have information interviews. Let me learn how to act like a duck, which means I, I understand this industry. I have knowledge about this industry. I have knowledge about this company. I have knowledge about this job. So those are a few things you can start with to say, okay, where do I go next? Anyone else? Yeah, so Walt and I are working on adding a short segment to session nine about this particular topic. And we reviewed it yesterday. And so I'm just gonna give my advice, which is very simple. If you wanna change careers or have the same career in a different industry, I think you'd find a lot of value in the experience of a coach. A lot of value in the experience of a coach. So consider that. There's so many aspects of rebranding yourself and your internal motivation to do something new as, a, as opposed to your fear reaction of getting out of something bad, you know, that's no longer working for you. Uh, there's just a lot of a lot of aspects to changing careers or changing industries. I would also suggest that when you present yourself, you're not going away from something, you're going towards something. So your energy is shown in moving forward, not getting away from something in the past. I always thought here's a here's a great opening statement. You say, well, tell me about yourself. Well, thank God I'm getting out of the food service industry. That has been such a bear. It's a nightmare. I can't wait to get started. <laughs> you know, that's not <laughs> that's not the way to start out in your opening statement. So, uh, look for something that you look at as moving forward and moving very positive that energizes you. And you know, just remember, you know, so next week we're you know our speakers will talk about strength finders and how to use it in your job search in two weeks. Our speaker is going to talk about being a better brand, branding yourself. So, you know, the next two weeks, we've got a couple of really good topics if you're thinking about that. Uh, Steve asked a question, does anybody have any recommendations for the best seminars, free training, et cetera, to learn more about Zoom? Uh, I will tell you that Zoom offers a lot of video courses about Zoom on how to use Zoom. So just go to zoom.com or whatever it is and, uh, you know, the Zoom website. And you should find, I mean, their help section is really good. I mean, everything you need. And if you need some, I'll be glad to work with you if you need to. I've, uh, with several of our speakers over the last several months, uh, I've had a few that are very technologically inept and had to sort of walk them through how to use Zoom. Okay, you need to get a different background and how to do all that. So I've actually made backgrounds for some of the Zoom for some people. So. You know, I'm glad to be able to, if you need to, if you can't find what you need on the Zoom website, some of the videos, uh, reach out to me and I'll be glad to help you. Uh, Suzanne asked, are there any suggestions for connections for job fairs in Alabama? Um, most of the job fairs around the country are canceled. They're not going to be having, they'll be virtual if they're at all. And most of the job fairs until this pandemic is over. And I don't expect that job fairs will pick back up until late summer or fall, because I don't think from a risk standpoint, they can do it. So, you know, just be really, really careful. So, you know, I would just Google job fairs, Alabama, if that's what you want to do. But just remember that it's a small percentage of people who are going to get jobs via job fairs. Uh, you know, informational interviewing, reaching out to your contacts, uh, targeting companies that you're interested in. If you know there's a target that, company that you're interested in, you know, reach out to them. That would be a, uh, a real big, that will be a real big help. Um, any other questions somebody has? Well, this is Brenda Toombs and I did 
uh, post a question in um, chat is sort of related to what was just said. Um, you had posted, um, I think a month or so ago about LinkedIn started a new service that will help you <clears throat> take your skills and uh, do a comparison to see if you can do a career pivot, which is what I'm looking into. Okay. And I haven't been able to find it on LinkedIn. Is that a, a paid for service? I don't think it's a paid service, but I will have to go back and research it because I, I remember seeing the email and I remember going actually and checking out the site. Uh, I will have to take a look. Um, as long as your contact information is in the chat, uh, I will do some research and make sure when I put out the email this afternoon that I'll find a link for that and, uh, and get it out there. Okay, thank you. So uh, somebody, uh, thank you, Patty, for putting in Bill Brewer's information. So if you're interested in his, uh, uh, in his, you know, career assessment test, whatever, you can reach out to Bill on that uh, the information he gave, she gave you there. What else can we answer for somebody? Are we done? Are we done for the day? <laughs> Everybody ready to go go to the run to the store and stock up for our big snowfall on Sunday morning? <laughs> Don't get the up snow on the hatch. <laughs> the snow flurries we're about to get, maybe. So uh, all right. Well let me let me go in this thing and let me show you just a few more slides and we will get out of here. So uh, let's see here, we did that slide. So let's go to the next one here. Uh, just as a reminder, all the Yahoo groups are gone. So, you know, take a little bit of time and go through your email uh, address book. And if you have any groups that are Yahoo groups, please delete those. Uh, for everybody who put their contact information in the chat box, I will make sure you'll get an invitation to join our new group. We are using groups.io and uh, it's called North Dallas Plano CFG. Uh, but I will invite, as long as your contact information is in the chat box, uh, I will copy that information and get it and send you an invitation this afternoon for those people who have not yet joined. Uh, next Friday at 930, join us for Clifton Strengths or Strength Finders, uh, the old Strength Finders name. Uh, Brandy Shade will be with us. Uh, she's an expert on Strength Finders. Uh, she's spoken to many, many career groups. Uh, so she'll have a really good presentation. If you haven't taken the test, I sort of recommend uh, going out. Uh, you can go online and just uh, pay the 15 bucks, or whatever, to get it to take it. Uh, you don't need to get all 32 strengths. It's not necessary. The getting your top five really helps you out, uh, and it's I think it's pretty useful. Uh, for those people who have not put their introductions into the chat box, we ask that you do that now. We're into the comment box. Nathan, thank you for doing that on Facebook. Uh, please put in your name, phone number, email address, positions you're looking for, a couple target companies, and then hit the return key. That way I'll capture all that information and I'll get it published this afternoon. I'll also make sure that our roster is updated with your most current information. Uh, please join us next week. Next Tuesday, Locke Alderson will be uh, joining us for LinkedIn Tuesdays. He'll be our uh, speaker on Tuesday about uh, LinkedIn talking about how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies that gets results. So join us every Tuesday. We have four different speakers who talk about LinkedIn. They rotate through and they each present something a little bit different to help, uh, help you in your job search. Every Wednesday, we do interviewing Wednesdays and we'll be on session number two of 13, preparing for a specific interview and networking part one. And then on Thursday, we do an effective resume Thursdays. We talk about tips that uh, we think or the most effective way that your resume can be formatted. Uh, we've got a resume format, a T cover letter format uh, that we, we hand out. And if you'd like to have submit your resume, we'll be glad to look at your resume online uh, and review it online. Uh, and if you'd like to take your header information and you know change your name to Angelina Jolie or Brad Pitt or Mickey Mouse, whatever, you can do that. You can hide your phone number because it will be public published on Facebook and on YouTube. This session has been recorded. It will be on the Career at FW Facebook page. It'll be on the Career USA YouTube channel later this afternoon. It usually takes a couple hours for this to upload. Uh, please check each page. Uh, follow us on Facebook. If you do, every time we go live, 
your phone will give you a little buzz saying we're currently broadcasting. And on YouTube, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you will get an email every time we post a new video so you can check what's going on. It was really nice over the holidays. I got uh, four or five emails from people saying, oh, can you hand me, send me the handout from this? I watched this video uh, a couple days ago, which was during the break when we weren't doing anything. So it was nice that people were going back to you know, catch up on something. Uh, it really you know, made me feel good about what we were doing. Uh, if you go to the YouTube channel, it looks like this. Make sure that the created playlist is what you first see. And don't click on the actual video, but down where you see that red arrow, click on any of them where it says view full playlist, either in the resumes, interviewing, LinkedIn, because when you do that, then you'll see a, a list of all the sessions that are up there. And then you can pick the title that you're interested in to uh, you know, see the program you're looking for. So thank you very much for joining us today. Have a great weekend. Uh, hey, and we'll see everybody uh, next week sometime. Hey, Jeff. Yes. I'm assuming since I don't have Twitter with the way the Twitter's status is with the media right now, is it a good place to be? <laughs>